Thank you, Keith. I'm going to talk about the application of remote sensing for um, flood mapping. Now, just a few points about uh, remote sensing uh, is probably is known to everyone. The points which I have put there, they are uh, uh, well known, but um, not in any means uh, trivial. The first point is the current sensors and the satellite systems have capability to detect a number of things on the surface of the Earth, including water and vegetation. The second point is it is the satellite remote sensing system which can capture um, and cover a large area um, in one go, uh, a snapshot, and which is not achievable by any other, other means. The third point is um, satellite usually um, uh, revisit the same place uh, at a regular interval. And that means uh, we, you could plan monitoring um, as, as you want. And the last bit, whatever we get um, from remote sense data uh, and all, all that information, that, that is geospatial. It can be integrated with the other available GIS information. Uh, it sounds simple, but the modelers appreciate it. Now, just uh, I'll go back in the history. The, one of the most popular satellite system is called Landsat. The series is started in 1972, and this is one of the first pictures from the satellite, and one of the first for the area which we are interested in. So that was taken in on the 23rd of October 1972, Landsat 1. And so this, the significance of that is, uh, we, we know the date how far back you could go. Now the other important thing which I would like to mention about this picture that, and, and the subsequent pictures, you will see that this is the data straight from the satellite and we, we try to map it. Satellite gives a lot of information um, say, for example, Landsat, this particular one was uh, Landsat 1, so it has only four bands, but subsequent we had seven and plus. Whatever you see red in this picture uh, is vegetation. So you could see quite bright red picture, and you might be probably distracted to see how much irrigation and irrigated crops were, but let's come back to the area which we are interested. So Bama, uh, probably everybody can recognize Bama is on the uh, center right side, and the other ecological sites in the same picture. So the point which I was making earlier that in a snapshot, how big area you could cover. Uh, this is just one scene. With the same satellite, the area extend northward, northeast, and to the southeast. The width is okay, means it's 185, that's not extended, but you could have quite a large area on the, on, on the same date. Now, the next, it is this subset of the previous uh, scene, which I showed you in 1972, uh, and it's, it's zoomed in on to Bama. So uh, whatever your visual interpretation could be about the Bama and Mileva around that time, you, you could recognize certain features in 72. Uh, again, the vegetation is red. And certain water bodies, you could see the tinge of blue. Now just to compare, I got another scene. This is uh, recent, January 2011. 
Uh, the same color combination, um, uh, whatever you see the red is, uh, is vegetation. Now you, you can think comparing, uh, and you could compare dot to dot if you, if you like. Uh, you will be tempted to compare the features, uh, say water bodies, vegetation, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and to do that, uh, we, we have to go back and redo the images uh, in, a, in a way that it can bring out the information which we want. There is a lot of information at the moment which you see, and it is limited for our visual interpretation. The manifestation which is shown here is just three bands, whereas the satellite covers, collects seven bands. So that will be our visual limit that how we can see. Now coming back to how we extract the information, I'll give you just one example, the same area. Uh, what I did by, the, by using the modern techniques, try to isolate the water, vegetation, and the bare ground. So what, whatever blue there is, that is water. Um, so clearly you could see this is better than the previous image. You could identify where the Murray River is as compared like that, uh, and, and the lakes and all. I would like to point out another thing about satellite data. Whatever you see here, each dot here represents a pixel which, which is of the dimension of 30 meter by 30 meter. Now the 30 meter by 30 meter could be a very small area, but in some cases, um, within an area of 30 by 30 meter, there could be a tree, um, a little bit water, some bare soil, and that, be, that creates a, an issue. If you got a large patch of irrigated pasture, like you, you, you see in, in the same picture to the uh, bottom right side in the Murray Valley area, green, the, if it is a field is uh, more than 30 meter, then it's pure vegetation. But if it is a mixed, like in Bama area, we face a situation where the information is mixed, and, and we use a technique which is called the unmixing of the signature uh, sets, as, uh, unmixing the information which is there in the pixel. And, uh, and, the, and in, in this particular ex exercise, what we are trying to do, unmixing the water. So lakes and other body, what, water bodies are not a problem. It is. <coughs> In, in the forested area when we see the canopy, bare ground, and, 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 and the water mixed, how to unmix that. The method which you use, um, I just simplified the algorithm of that. We got the satellite data. We uh, calibrate it and, and, and prepare it for uh, the model which we use uh, is a mixture modeling. And our aim is to, to get the fraction of the water within each pixel. And that is the, uh, technically we call it end member, water end member. Then the, uh, we do a little bit more exercise uh, by looking at the vegetation cover. In case there is a pixel, uh, satellite thought it is a tree, but um, the surrounding area could be all water. Then we have to make a judgment and calculate the probability whether the, that area was a water and not con confounded with the, whatever the vegetation was. Uh, and ultimately we get a uh, fraction water data. Uh, you may notice that the validation is the last point, but I put the dotted line there. Uh, what it means, uh, I'll come back to that, uh, uh, validation is a very challenging exercise. Uh, validation means you should validate 
an area and your results of the flooded area. Uh, so for that, you should do the ground survey um, when it is flooded, be there, and bring the information. Um, I'll come back to that later. Just um, to give you the example, of the uh, mapping, uh, how it looks like. So this is an example where <coughs> we did the uh, mapping, flood mapping for the Baba Creek, um, not far from Bama and Mileva, as you know. Um, on the left side is a uh, sub-scene of spot four. So the, you could use more than one satellite. Um, so this is a spot series four, where the pixel size is uh, uh, 20 meter by 20 meter. The first of January 2011, and on the right side is the uh, is the map. But what it looks like. The second example is Kundrup uh, Parikuta. Um, the image which you used was the spot five uh, of 2010. Um, the image shows uh, Ganboa Forest as well, but um, in this particular commission exercise, we did only the Kundrup Paraguta forest. Uh, this is um, 2009 um, example uh, of flood mapping in the Ganboa forest. Uh, the image was spot five. That's a 10 meter resolution there. Uh, it's uh, the last example just. Uh, to emphasize that this work was done earlier uh, with Keith Ward uh, in 2002. Uh, just, just to emphasize, the satellite data which we used was Landsat. That uh, you, you need not be restricted to uh, a snapshot of one point of time. You, you could monitor. So this uh, is starting from October through November to December. So you, uh, the resolution which is there probably is not um, showing you the variation, but there is as you zoom in. Now, uh, coming back to that validation thing. So, <coughs> validation um, is a, a very challenging thing. Um, so, what what we have done that whenever there is opportunity, that there is a water, and anybody did the any aerial survey. Uh, we took the opportunity, and the opportunity rose. Um, the big flood in Victoria, and this is the image, uh, not far. Uh, Bama is not shown in this one because this is the area uh, west of Bama. Uh, <coughs> so that was uh, in January 2011. Uh, flood was there uh, everywhere, which is visible very clearly. And at the same time, uh, since that was a big event, uh, DSE took quite a lot of aerial photos. And I happened to have access to those and selected few areas. Uh, so on the left side, Vendela Reserve. Um, so the image was taken on 28th January, uh, but the aerial photo which we got very closest was the day after. But I thought probably it didn't matter because uh, the water didn't move. Uh, it was plenty of water, so I think it was, it was all right. Uh, <coughs> then the other areas were Benwell Forest, Benwell State Forest, I think it's still Benwell State Forest. Uh, that was taken on 19th January, the day before. And uh, the third one was a good drum state forest. Uh, now, using these aerial photos and uh, comparing our results, uh, the overall accuracy which we found was 87%. So that varies in other examples which we did um, above 80. In this particular case, we could get as close as that one. But if, if you can capture, um, hopefully sometime, on the same day as, um, as, as the satellite, then probably we, we could be more uh, accurate in judging the, uh, <coughs> the accuracy of that. Now I will conclude. 
Remote sensing has been there uh, for a few decades, um, quite a few decades. And it has, uh, I believe, that it has matured in terms of uh, scientific vigor and the methodology is that uh, it should be uh, used routinely uh, for monitoring uh, things like flood vegetation uh, in the riparian system. Uh, now the satellite data is uh, very accessible. There are quite a few satellites. And the third point is that the satellite data is affordable. The latest Landsat, which was launched in February this year, has been successful. That's called Landsat 8. And USGS has decided to put that data, the pre-processed -pre data of, of Landsat 8 free of cost. So there's no excuse to not to use it. The commercial satellite, now the Landsat 8 is still the same frequency, it will be 16 days. Every 16 days it will be visiting the same place in the world. Commercial satellites provide quite a lot of flexibility of access. For example, the RapidEye has five satellites, a constellation of five satellites, so if you order, probably within a day or two, um, you could uh, capture, uh, get a picture of, of your area. So you could plan. Uh, on, only stick with business with commercial satellites, it has to be ordered. And th there's some cost associated with it. Uh, my message is, so, uh, you could read that, I will read myself, satellite remote sensing is an objective and affordable technology which can be deployed routinely in monitoring water and vegetation to help manage riparian systems. Thank you.